Hello again, welcome to day two of 12 Days in the Disciplines. And today we're gonna to dive into what is really, honestly, my least favorite discipline of them all, fasting. So what is fasting? It's a voluntary abstinence from food or drink or some other kind of pleasure or enjoyment, but classically food and drink, and water is okay. And we do it for the sake of prayer or for worship. Fasting is different than dieting because you're doing it for the purpose of opening your soul to grace, the same as with all the rest of the disciplines. Now this is a practice that's really fallen into disuse in our culture, but again, it was so familiar in Jesus' day that Jesus didn't do a lot of teaching on fasting, he just said, when you fast. When we open to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 16, he says to his disciples, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they're fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So again, Jesus focuses on the heart of the discipline, which is not to impress others, or to make a hunger strike before God and say, God, you know, I'm going to fast until you, you decide that you're going to listen to me. This is for the sake of opening up our soul to grace again so that our Heavenly Father, who sees what's done in secret, will, will reward us. It's a physical act of worship that demonstrates both our sincerity in prayer and also our full reliance on God. Again, Jesus is probably our greatest model for fasting in all of the scriptures. At the beginning of his ministry, he fasted for 40 days. And at the end of his fast, he said this, Man cannot live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So when we fast, it makes us more aware that we're relying on God for, really, our daily bread. Now sometimes when fasting is mentioned in the Bible, it is for a particular purpose. And if you've read the book of Esther or the book of Daniel, you'll know that sometimes they fasted as a people in order to stave off calamity. There's also a lot of evidence that the Jewish people and the early Christians fasted on particular days of the week. I find for me Wednesday is the most beneficial. It's kind of like my middle day in between Sunday and Sunday when I need a little bit more focus and reliance on God. So when I choose a day to fast, it usually is Wednesday. Uh, sometimes I'll fast because again, like the Israelite people, there's something special or important coming. Like if I'm leading worship at an event or I'm speaking to pastors and I need a little bit of extra knowledge that I'm relying fully on God, I'll usually choose a day to fast and I'll fast from morning until supper. And for me, uh, as somebody with low blood sugar and who gets hangry really easily, that's, that's pretty much the most that I can handle in terms of my body when it comes to fasting. But I find those days to be terrifically beneficial. This is how I practice. Every time I feel a pang of hunger, I use that to kind of nudge my soul into a mode of prayer. So again, as the afternoon wears on, and I might be in the middle of work or in the middle of meetings, as I feel hungry, I remind my soul, your hunger is really for God, and being with Him is the best thing that you could do during this time. There was one particular season in my life when we had a family member actually go missing. And I chose Tuesday in this particular time as my fasting day, and every Tuesday I would fast and pray just that that family member would be found. Now at the end of a couple of weeks, um, another family member called and let me know that, uh, that the family member had been found. I mean, it was a huge time of rejoicing and thanking God for what he did. And I found out that this family member who called me had actually started fasting and praying on exactly the same day. Kind of a, one of those supernatural, spirit-led circumstances. So yesterday, when I fasted, it was a day with a lot of meetings. And uh, days when I have a lot of meetings, it's probably the most difficult days to fast because I want to be focused and I want to be present with people. But this is what I found. Even though my body was kind of uh, suffering the hunger pains, I found in those meetings, I could be more present to people and more present to God actually because of my fast. And uh, as important issues came up, I feel, felt like my soul was just a little bit more spiritually in tune and I was a little bit more e uh, able to listen to God and to others. And again, I only fasted lunch. This is normally the time when I'd be practicing my discipline of prayer. So when I'd be normally be eating, I would dedicate that time to the practice that we did yesterday, which is the practice of prayer. Again, as I've mentioned a few times, I really am a novice at this discipline and I've had mentors who've told me stories of longer fasts that for particular purposes. 
um, one of my previous senior pastors was planting a church on the west coast of Newfoundland. And during the early days of that church plant, when you know they were asking for spiritual ground to be broken and for the kingdom of God to be advancing in the hearts of people, they actually gathered together as a lead team and they fasted for a week at a time. Now, again, if you're gonna go uh, full board and do a fast like that for a particular spiritual purpose, make sure that you consult both your doctor and a spiritual director to make sure that you're doing things in line uh, that are healthy for both your body and for your soul. So I would love to hear how your practice of fasting goes and how you find it beneficial and the things that you do to help to keep you on track during the day when you're doing that kind of fasting. Thanks again for joining us. It's been a pleasure sharing my experience with the disciplines with you. Oh my, maybe coming in here wasn't the best idea. <laughs>